Okay, needless to say, the Houston Texans made a interesting move, and we're going to talk about it a little bit, and we're going to let you know if it was a good move, if it was a bad move, and we might even touch base on a couple of other things. If you're new to this channel, thank you so much for watching. Um, this is not our first channel. We have another one called Sports Talk Detroit, but we love teams that the NFL ignores. We've been doing Texans content since before the season even started. Oh man, what a ride it's been. Uh, it's been so much fun to follow the rise of the Houston Texans. So as long as we keep making videos, maybe they'll just keep being good. Maybe we're a good luck charm or something. But if you haven't done so, please subscribe. We're always looking for more subscribers and so thankful to you if you do. Um, so let's get right into it. You've probably heard by now, but the Houston Texans have actually traded out of the first round. And you might be saying to yourself, like, why would they... Why would they do that? Like, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But they've decided to trade out of the first round with the Vikings. The Vikings look like they're making a move of some sort. Uh, maybe they're trying to stockpile first round picks in order to move up and try and get their quarterback of the future as they lost Kirk Cousins. But the Texans already have their quarterback. They actually have a lot of their key positions. We're going to do the evaluation of the roster. Um, and we're also going to look at what they might be looking for. So let's first look at the trade, and here it is. The Vikings and Texans have agreed to terms on a major deal in advance of the draft. Anytime a first-round pick's involved, I agree it is a major deal. Minnesota gets pick number 23 and 232. All right, so Houston sends out two picks. All right, it's a, a first-rounder and a seventh-rounder. They get back three picks. Two of them this year, pick number 42 and pick 188. So they move down 19 spots. They move up 44 spots. I'm just doing math in my head. So if it's not right, don't don't make uh, fun of me. And then they get a second rounder next year. So next year you're going to be looking at even more picks. So what does this leave the Texans with? But before I get into that, do you think this is a good deal? Uh, people always struggle, I think, with like the whole moving down in the draft thing. Do you think it's a good deal what they ended up doing? Are you happy with the return that they got in this one? Um, now, I'm going to go into the return and then talk about speculation because there's always speculation after a trade. And there was speculation that the Texans were offered up a third round pick for Keenan for or they offered up a third round pick for wide receiver Keenan Allen. Isn't that crazy? So like this is another thing. Like they were going after a wide receiver, which tells me a little bit about something they might want to do. Makes sense that they would want to get Stroud like a reliable uh pass catcher. Um maybe they're looking to upgrade their wide receiver room. All right, so let's look at what they have currently on the roster, knowing what the picks are, then we're going to go into the big board, see who's going to be available, and what that could look like for the Texans as um, as they're picking and on the clock. We'll look at what picks they have and what uh, who will be around about during that time. So as you can see this, um, I'll zoom in a little bit here. Um, and then, uh, that's too much. Hello. All right. This is fine. All right. So you got Ward and Petre on, uh, in the back end. That's okay. If not great, you got Stingley Jr. Locked down corner and then something to be desired on the other side. Your defensive line is now very, very stout. Um, and there's actually, uh, I'll make another video tomorrow talking about an under, uh, how do I want to put this? Like an important role player that they sign that I think could be very helpful for their defense on the offensive side. Um, this is what you're looking at. It's a wonder. We're wondering what's going on at the tackle position at right tackle that is. And then there's a lot of pretty good to mediocre play in the middle. That's just what it is. Um, they've got. They've got some stuff, all right? They've got some stuff. So you got Noah Brown in here. You got Tank Dell. You got Malik Collins. Or I'm sorry. Oh, my goodness. Nico Collins. His jersey's right there. Don't worry. I know which Collins it is. You got Joe Mixon now at running back. So if you're asking me what are they going to be looking for uh, around that pick, I'm going to say offensive lineman. I'm going to say defensive tackle, possibly. They got Fatukasi, which is he's a pretty good player. 
all around player. Um, they're not looking for a huge pass rush, but they got Autry as well. So they have good starting. Like, what does their depth look like? I think they could go there. I think they could go cornerback too. I think they could go safety. So what do they have as far as picks now? I think that's a question everybody has. Um, they no longer have pick 23. They have pick 42. They keep their own pick, pick 59. And they have, they have the Eagles third round pick, pick 86. They have the Browns fourth round pick and their own fourth round pick. So they have five picks in the first four rounds, three in the top 100. You can say five in the top 125, but it's 127. So, I mean, it's close enough, right? I mean, it's close enough. So who could we be looking at? You're not sure who's going to fall, but I think it's fair to assume anyone outside the top 30 is absolutely possibly going to be there. Um, you know, I don't think Keenan, Keon Coleman falls. Troy Franklin absolutely could. Rake Straw Jr. could fall down to that spot because uh, unless he has a better pro day than he did at the Combine. So that could be kind of your CB2. That could be a good pick. Zach Frazier could fall. Um, in fact, I think in this one, they have Zach Frazier uh, as the pick at number 42. Um, so Zach Frazier could be there. Um, Xavier Worthy is not going to be there. Tyler Newbin would be a good safety if you want a safety. Um, Peyton Wilson could be a good linebacker. Um, you could get... <coughs> oh, bless me. All right, so um, offensive tackle, Kingsley, uh, Samatai, um Kamari Lassiter could be your second corner. If Fisk is still available, that's like a no-brainer. Draft him. Uh, Xavier Leggett won't stay. TJ Tampa could be a good corner. Look at this. I mean, there are so many players. Roman Wilson, I did a video on about how I think that could be a great pickup. Uh, Chris Jenkins, Ricky Pearsall, wide receiver, could be very good. Uh, Chris Jenkins, I absolutely love at defensive tackle. And I love Tavondre Sweat at defensive tackle. I don't think Sweat makes it down to here, but I absolutely love both of these guys on the interior of the defensive line. I think they're fantastic. And that's the kind of player you can get with um, with either your first or your second second rounder. You have two second rounders. There is a lot of talent in here. Mike Sainra still to play the nickel. Um, there is a lot going on that you have to say to yourself, Christian Haynes, um, Junior Colson, good linebacker. You, you need to understand there's a lot of talent in the second round of this draft and a lot of starting caliber players. So you can still easily go out there, get a couple of starting caliber players with your second round picks, and you add a second round pick for next year. Do I love getting rid of first round picks? I don't. I really don't. Um, but when you can get two seconds out of it, I mean, it's not bad. That seems about right. The value seems fair. Um, so let me know what you think of the trade. I just thought it was unique. I just didn't see it coming. But, you know, obviously they are comfortable uh, drafting in the later rounds and don't feel this need to have pick 23 because they must feel like they can find good starters in the second round. So let's see what they do. All right. Thanks so much for watching. See you on the next one.